Transcendence. This movie's been out for a while now. Uh, didn't really make a big splash in theaters. Uh, now that it's been on uh, on demand, Blu-ray, DVD, a lot of people are uh, discovering the movie. It's it's kind of finding its audience. Um, people are finally you know deciding to check it out, uh, even though it got some pretty bad reviews originally. Um, but people are checking it out. I'm one of those uh, people, uh, so I wanted to share my uh, thoughts on the movie. So seeing, having seen it recently. Um, I mean, definitely the first thing that kind of occurred to me, like within first 30 minutes or so of the movie, I feel that this is a movie that, uh, for anyone who saw Her, uh, the Spike Jones movie, Her, um, and didn't quite think there was enough science fiction to it, um, this is going to be a movie that might kind of present what you were looking for there, sort of. I mean, I'll tell you right now, Her is a much better movie than... Than Transcendence, I can assure you. Um, but I mean, they have similar kind of themes to them, you know, like humanity and technology, and you know, uh, what what kind of you know world are we living in where uh, a computer can have the same thoughts and rights and dreams uh, as as a human being, basically. Um, so there's you know uh, interesting things there. But I didn't think you know her uh, as good as it is. I didn't think there was much of a sci-fi edge, which I don't think it was going for anyway. It was going for more of a human story, and you know it was a surprising and uh, moving story between a, a man and his computer, basically. But it, there there wasn't a lot like say in, in in the world around them, in the kind of cultural climate around them that they really spoke of, which may have potentially ruined the movie and, and what people like about the movie. But here we get stuff like that. Here with Transcendence, we get stuff like that, and uh, it 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 has a a lot of ideas to it, um, a great many interesting science fiction ideas, which I mean, obviously ideas we've. Uh, seen in other movies before, in other works of science fiction before, um, but it is presented in an interesting way, and I appreciated the ideas to the movie, though they do not come perfectly into fruition. Um, the movie has its faults, so uh, we'll put it that way. Um, this is the directorial debut from uh, Wally Pfister, uh, who, of course, uh, very well known for his work with uh, Christopher Nolan. Um, you know, uh, Inception, Dark Knight trilogy, uh, a great cinematographer. Um, so, I mean, definitely, this seems like kind of a, a good project uh, for him to kind of make uh, such a debut uh, uh, with. Um, I mean, and I mean, the kind of fact is, uh, except for some very rare cases, not every directorial debut is going to be, you know, hit the ground running as a masterpiece or anything like that. This is far from a masterpiece, I can tell you. Um, but it's, 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 a, I think it's, it's a, a, a worthy movie. I think it's something that the people should check out. Um, so Wally Pfister definitely shows promise as a, a, a unique, unique filmmaker with his own voice. Like, I mean, that's also kind of a struggle too. Like the, the style is close to the Nolan style, but obviously if he's a cinematographer, um, you know, they have to be simpatico, you know, they have to have a, a shared interest in, in presenting at least the visual elements uh, of, of their movies, basically. So, I mean, that's a struggle as well, keeping the style that, that he knows and likes, but finding his own voice, uh, which I think we see here. I think we see very strong uh, evidence of that. Um, and uh, obviously Johnny Depp in the lead role, uh, playing the uh, scientist William Castor. Um, uh, always an interesting actor, Johnny Depp. Always going for something uh, a, a little different, basically. Um, though he's, you know, aside from like the Pirates movies and, you know, some of the Tim Burton movies, he's trying new things, different things, not like uh, uh, your typical big Hollywood star kind of movies. Um, always something a little bit different. This definitely is something different. And, you know, it's, it's interesting to see him not in, like, you know, uh, crazy over-the-top get-up, like pale face makeup or anything like that. Um, well, in, for the most part, um, you know. Uh, and it is a, kind of a low-key performance and an understated performance from Johnny Depp because essentially he's playing like a computer, basically, um, or a human turning into a computer. Uh, aside from her, I'd, I'd even kind of share some comparison uh, with The Fly. Um, so it is kind of like a, a, you know, Cronenberg's The Fly specifically. It's kind of like a love story where the, the male hero of this love story is slowly turning into something um, that uh, uh, is lesser and lesser of, uh, you know, what uh, uh, his love interests knows, like less of the man 
uh, that she thought he was uh, slowly turning into something else. Uh, Fly's case, he's turned to fucking fly. Um, this movie, he's, he's you know turning into a computer program and and those are the interesting ideas of the movie um like for one thing it does show like the the uh, uh political and economical uh cultural uh climate uh, of this certain universe basically i mean the plot uh, to keep it as brief as possible this scientist he's you know working on uh pro projects that um while they don't sp specifically show the particulars um and, and the practical elements of them uh has good intentions, um, trying to see, trying to create a link uh, between uh, humanity, technology, to help fight disease, help fight, uh, you know, uh, any kind of uh, de debilitating uh, elements of the human condition. Um, we're all just, you know, we're, we're uh, uh, natural things, we're decaying things. What if technology could, uh, you know, uh, kind of save that or at least uh, delay it, um, which would be nice. Um, and, and there's this whole kind of underground movement where people are so totally against uh, technology and, and the grasp it's had over our lives, which, I mean, it's not pretty on the nose. I mean, obviously, you know, everyone's on their iPhones, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, and that's something that sort of was addressed with her, too. But this one is way more, you know, over the top and obvious, but still interesting. So there are these, like, underground movements where uh, basically they're like terrorist groups, for lack of a better word, where they're, you know, trying to stop these types of projects. They're unplugging themselves, um, staying away from technology. Technology has failed us. Let's restart from zero. Let's be human again, um, basically. And they are willing to do that at any cost uh, with terrorist actions. Um, so basically, um, he is more or less assassinated, but in, like with a, he's shot with a bullet, the bullet's poison, the bullet slowly kills him, basically. So he's uh, transferring his memories, his persona, basically, into a computer, basically. That's basically it. I mean, it's a little more complicated than that, but that's basically it. Um, so it does raise interesting questions there, like the, the moral uh, uh, quandary of that. Like, is it right to do that? And, you know... And even if that's aside, it does bring kind of interesting questions like uh, what, you know, with with death and, and say moving on into, uh, in this case, a computer program. If it's not a computer program, what if it's reincarnation? What if it's heaven? Whatever, you, whatever we believe what happens next. How, uh, wh what constitutes the soul? Where does it go? Um, how tangible is it? I mean, in this case, I mean, he transfers him himself into a computer, and his wife, uh, played by Rebecca Hall, I mean, she, she's like, that's him, that's, that's obviously him. Um, but anyway, he's following through um, with his uh, research, with his, uh, you know, uh, goal uh, to, to achieve uh, transcendence and help humanity, uh, but always, you know, <laughs> the, the worst monstrosities uh, uh, committed uh, by man always start with good intentions, don't they? And, and he kind of like sets off a side on himself, uh, br brings her along, obviously, um, and is helping people. He has this like little own, like a desert community uh, that, that he starts where he is kind of uh, progressing uh, with this technology and, and it's reaching a point where it gets very, very scary. Um, and so that was interesting too, like that he is successful in, in what he's trying to do and, and how he can, uh, you know, re reassemble like, a, 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 like a, a, a severed limb, for example, or whatever, or a, a cornea or anything wrong. He, he basically create life uh, through technology, through his thoughts, which is interesting. Um, and it's like I, I, another weird comparison, but like you see this whole, whole uh, separate community here based off technology, relying on technology, thriving on technology. You, know, you can almost see that as like the, the exact polar opposite of, you know, that uh, uh, scene in uh, Easy Rider uh, where, you know, uh, Dennis Hopper, Peter Fonda, they go to that commune and, you know, it's like the, the tail end of the 60s and you know, see all the hippies like, yeah, man, we're, we're, we're like, you know, we're, we're thriving on our own. We're planting our own food, man. And, you know, uh, Fonda's just like, fuck. You know, what are they doing here? They failed. It's like, here, here's, here's, here's a radish. <laughs> but you, you, basically, it's like the polar opposite of that. Um, so that's interesting, like how it's like almost like a, a, a new age where technology, you know, would uh, reach such levels of very, you know, scary potential. Um, so there's that. 
Um, and, you know, you have the side plot. Uh, Paul Bettany is also in the movie. Morgan Freeman's in the movie. Killian Murphy also in the movie. Um, they all kind of have their subplot. Killian Murphy is like a cop investigating uh, uh, the uh, the militia or terrorist group or, or whoever, the, the unplugged, basically, who are creating terrorist actions. Morgan Freeman is uh, an old colleague of, uh, of uh, Will's. Um, and, yeah, uh, Paul Bettany, also a colleague, uh, he's kind of, He's kidnapped by by the uh, terrorist group, and then starts to sort of em empathize with them. As does Morgan Freeman's character, as does Killian Murphy's character. When they see what uh, what William is is doing, and and the very scary uh, uh, possibilities of of his power, um, basically. Uh, so all that's really interesting, uh, and and it does kind of it, it it tries as it may tries as it might. Uh, to bring everything together, um, but there's certain aspects of the story that are stronger than others. Um, like I didn't really, I, I, I thought the like the whole terrorist group they could have been better, but they're pretty like, you know, this is like C CBS drama kind of plot here um, and acting here. Uh, Rooney or not Rooney Mara, Kate Mara is uh, the the leader of them, I guess basically. Uh, I I could have seen. A different actress in the role. I mean, I don't think she really sells it that much. Um, Paul Bettany, he's good, and it's kind of you know ironic that he's in this movie. Where whereas um, you know in the Marvel movies, the Iron Man movies, he he is a computer, and he's like that's like his most known role for better or worse. Um, Paul Bettany's a great actor, but the, here it, it's just like he's you know he he doesn't have too meaty of a role. It could have been a better role, like. It, the movie is kind of framed with him. Uh, like he, he, they show him at the beginning. They show him at the end, um, and and I think they could have made him a stronger character. And I think they could have kind of connected everything a lot better because there are sections in the movie where it drags a little bit. I found myself most interested um, in 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 the love story uh, between uh, uh, Rebecca Hall and Johnny Depp because you know I was kind of thinking, okay, um, it has this background climate to it. Uh, it, so it's giving me something that her didn't have, basically. But they didn't fall through on, on that quite as well as something like her did. Uh, very, very much not so. Um, so that was a little disappointing. But still, at the same time, I mean, Johnny Depp gives a good performance in that, he, for the most part, aside from like the first third of the movie, um, he is like, the, he's this computer, basically. He's a computer program. So you kind of think, well, how much of this uh, is the human of him? How much of it is the computer of him? Uh, you know, you can transfer your soul or being, presence, what have you, into a computer. Um, but is it is it you working through the computer, or is the computer going to be working through you now? So basically, that's that's it. Um, so you kind of see this very very subtle and sometimes not so subtle uh, struggle between you know is is he a computer program? Is he a real person? And I, I guess in so many ways what it kind of arrives at um, is that he is more computer, but this computer uh, learned to, to love as well. So maybe that's what we uh, come to there, which is interesting, actually. I mean, it's not done in a cheesy way. I mean, the way I put it is just the cheesiest shit, um, but it is kind of what they arrived to, but in not as cheesy as a way, believe me. Um, so I liked all that, and I, I liked a lot of elements to it. It has interesting ideas. I, I think the the plot just kind of... Uh, it goes here and there. Um, the ideas uh, don't get as much fulfillment as they should have gotten. Um, but it's an interesting movie. It's about interesting ideas. And, you know, so, so what if they don't do it perfectly? Uh, I think uh, it's it's very much a, an interesting science fiction film. Uh, I think it's a very strong directorial uh, debut from Wally Pfister. And I think it's something that uh, can be rewarded on repeat viewings. This is an interesting movie. This is a movie that I think has been underrated quite a bit. And I think it's a movie that does raise questions. Uh, and while it's still entertaining, uh, still able to provide what you'd like to see in a, a Johnny Depp movie, a Johnny Depp cyber thriller, basically. It does provide those elements, but at the same time, it does uh, inspire at least a little bit of reflection on our own world, and I think it's very much worth seeing. I'd rate it three stars out of four. Transcendence is imperfect, but 
Wally Pfister shows a lot of strength as a director, and the ideas are interesting enough to maintain your interest. Uh, so a, a lot of people are, are going to be shit-talking this movie quite a bit and putting it on, like, worst of 2014 lists. I don't think it's that level of bad. It's it's a flawed movie. I feel conflicted about it because I, I know, like, in, in my heart of hearts that it could be a better movie. Um, but for what we have here... Uh, I, I think is something that's that's worth checking out. I'm glad I checked it out. Uh, it is an interesting movie with interesting ideas, as I mentioned. And I, I like science fiction. I, I like you know the ideas that they can present, and how they can you know try to provoke us into thinking about the world around us, which you know as uh, every day becomes more reliant on technology, um, uploaded from my iPhone. Um, but uh, basically, uh, it's 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 worth seeing. I think so. Definitely uh, check it out if you haven't. I uh, hope I didn't spoil it too much um but yeah uh, that's my review uh as always comment rate subscribe all that good stuff follow me on social media at hi this is derek on on twitter uh derek237.tumblr.com i write reviews um and yeah uh that's pretty much it so th thanks for watching